All right, best exercise for longevity. Sweden is producing methane reduced beef. And most importantly, I'd like to uh, uh, sort of recognize that today, my better half, my significant other, the gal's been with me for uh, a decade now. Uh, Jasmine is now 56 years of age and looking as beautiful as ever. She's doing great. She is uh, 90% carnivore. The rest of her diet is uh, a little bit of fruit and a little bit of cheese mostly. Well, I guess it's still, I guess, technically carnivore if you want to go to that. But anyway, she is uh, uh, just a wonderful woman to put up with me and has uh, just accomplished so many things in her life. I'm super proud of her. And so happy birthday, Jasmine. Okay, so let's go on to talk about a little about Sweden. So Sweden... A uh, company, I guess, is Loam or Lome. I'm not sure how they how you pronounce it. Uh, has uh, marketed what they call methane reduced beef, and what is it, what what does that mean? Well, basically, what they do is they feed cattle. Uh, and for you guys who don't know this, and a lot of people are confused about this, so cattle on forage or cattle on ga- on grass produce more methane than do feedlots. And I know a lot of people don't uh, don't understand that, but that's just the way the rumen works. So when you have high forage based food it breaks it down. There's methanogenic uh, bacteria that in the rumen that, that create methane with that. Now, remember, grass on its own in many cases, you know, depending on the atmospheric conditions, will break down outside and turn into methane too. But these methanic, methanogenic bacteria produce a rumen higher in, in low-quality feed, in forages low-quality feed when it comes to energy as compared to things like, you know, uh, other foods like brain, grains and, and, and byproducts that cattle are sometimes finished on. But that methane uh, or the, those bacteria can be suppressed or their methanogenic bacteria can be, activity can be suppressed by different feed additives. And I've been playing this now, playing with this now for the last, oh, I don't know, half a dozen years or so now. And they've, they've, they've consistently shown uh, a species of red algae that actually suppresses methane, uh, methane, uh, production from these cows by something like 80 or 90 percent. So a huge, huge reduction in methane. That is the greenhouse gas of concern. Now, my, not my opinion, but a lot of the research suggests that methane is a flow ga- gas. It goes in the atmosphere, spent part of the cycle. You know, probably don't need, we probably don't need to mess with it. But regardless, we have the climate, peop- you know, climate crisis. People are going to be pushing, pushing, pushing for this. So we will see that, uh, that response uh, coming back, and, and we'll see more and more of that. And, you know, for the people that say that cows are emitting, you know, 14.5% of global emissions, which is not true. It's actually 5% when you look at actual direct emissions. But the life cycle, life from the life cycle side, so it's going to dramatically reduce that. If you can reduce the methane emissions by, say, 90%, that's going to further uh, weaken that, that already – awful argument uh, for that. And for those that say, I'm not going to eat that beef, you probably will. Most of you probably will. Uh, Most of us eat beef, uh, you know, in the United States and other countries, it's produced on cows that are not eating exclusively grass or eating a lot of other things. The research seems to suggest it doesn't impact the quality of the meat or anything like that. Again, hard to say for sure, but that is coming. So just so you know that, and probably there's going to be a lot of people investing in that, and probably a lot of people are going to uh, uh, want to support that for various reasons. Uh, whether you do or not is, is, you know, kind of beside the point of what's going to happen, I think. All right, the, the, the final thing I wanted to chat about, and, and let me know in the comments what you guys think about that. Would you eat methane-reduced beef? You know, I mean, many of you guys are eating conventional beef, which has a number of different... Uh, "Quote unquote unnatural things," if you want to, if you will, and this is no different. I think um, walking. Okay, so let's talk about that. The so number one exercise in the world has been sh- to, to to prolong longevity, uh, health span, lifespan has been shown to be walking. So I mean, everybody should be walking, right? I mean, that's 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 sort of basic, um, uh, basic, just you know, physiology here. And why why is that so? If you want to improve your overall health and longevity, the biggest shift you can make is going from sedentary to non-sedentary. You know that that by far, and that's why walking has shown over the world to be such a such a huge thing. It's accessible for just about every person on the planet, with rare exception, can walk. Doesn't cost anything. Doesn't require any special equipment. Doesn't require any special skills. We're all essentially more or less born with the ability to do that. You know, given a year or so as a, t- as a baby learning how to do this stuff, but we all know how to do it. 
Um, it does a good job at disposing of insulin, I mean, sorry, of glucose, you know, when our muscles are working kind of low intensity, glucose is being utilized. Um, it prevents sedentary activity. Everybody should be doing a decent amount of walking on a daily basis or, or almost every day, if, if, if at all possible. Um, that does not negate the fact that you continue to make gains by doing other things such as strength training, which I think are just as critically important. You know, we go from, uh, you know, sedentary. And, and remember, we quoted a study the other day looking at the obesity rates, seeing that, you know, something half the, half the population in the United States does nothing. They literally do no strenuous activity or even moderately strenuous activity at all. None, zero, which is just pitiful. So walking in that group, which is half the country, you know, just going for a daily walk, you know, 20 minute, 30 minute walk a day is going to dramatically overall improve their health outcomes. So if you're not walking, you should be, hopefully all you guys will listen to me should be walking every day. I walk every day. I take my dogs for a walk. I throw, throw a 50 pound uh, weight vest on many times to do that. Uh, that incre- increases the difficulty, but you know, again, that, that's not, uh, the, the end of the end of the, uh, uh, prescription, you know, in my view, it's, Walk, you know, do those things. Obviously, eat well, do some strength training. All right, guys, let me show you, let me know what you guys think. How much do you guys walk every day? What do you think about the methane, uh, methane beef? And say happy to Jasmine for me. Say happy birthday to Jasmine for me. All right, you guys take care. We'll talk to you soon. Bye bye.